best way to make money investing in real estate. Stay tuned, we're gonna go through that all next. So hey, here's the reality. We all know you're watching this video. How much money can you make? You can make as much money as you want. That's the reality. It's really up here on what you believe you can do. And I know that might might sound cheesy, but the longer I do this industry and the more opportunities present itself, I realize that I've been my worst critic typically in my limiting beliefs. So let me share with you what I've learned and make sure that First of all, we keep you in the game. So let's go through that first ways to kind of make sure that you don't get out of the game before you're actually in the game. So people that know me, I mean, you, you see me doing a lot of projects. The reality though is, is I'm a very conservative investor. I, I take very calculated risks, very low risk. I just don't like putting too much on the line, if you will. So especially when I was new, I what I did, and I'm gonna share with you, um, how I got started in commercial real estate investing. And that is through the executive suite model. I didn't necessarily, you know, I wasn't sure how, am I gonna be good at this? Is the market ready for this? Am I gonna, you know, tank at it? Whatever it is, all those limiting beliefs that I just wasn't sure because I've never done it before. And until you do it, it's just all in theory and you question yourself. So what we did, the very first commercial deal that I did was I took um, a building and divided it up and I broke it into executive suites. That gave me a much higher lift on my return on investment than what a traditional one tenant or two tenant lease would do. It was a few thousand square feet. We carved it up. We rented out those suites. It gave me a much higher, much higher return. But also what I was thinking was, I didn't want to be at risk if one tenant left. So if one tenant in this scenario left, you know, it's like having a nine legs. If I lose one, I still have eight. I'm still standing, right? So versus if I have one person running out the entire thing and they rent, now all that debt is on me. I have to make those payments as well. So you also have to think like from an end user, it's much more palatable. It's much easier for them to make a, a you know, five, six, seven hundred dollar payment than a three, four, five thousand dollar payment. So the smaller the payment, and yes, it's a smaller space as well, but it's affordable. And typically people aren't utilizing an entire building. They're utilizing a space. So that's why I chose that particular asset class to get started. So that allowed me to get into commercial real estate and not necessarily lose money. I, I was conservative about the way that I got into the market. You could do the same. Again, I'm sharing with you how I got in there from that model. Then I duplicated it over and over and over and over. So we have like nine buildings on this one street that are just dedicated to that particular model. You could do the same. That way you're duplicating it and it's scalable. Any type of real estate business that you get into, asset class, if you could duplicate it, let's say it's like a co-working space, executive suites, a medical, you name it, then you could start attracting the same tenants over and over and scale it all over the country. So again, how much money could you make? Depends on how ambitious you are and how serious you are about getting into commercial and making it happen. Same thing goes for multifamily. You figure out a multifamily strategy, the same thing. It's all about duplication of the process and making it happen, but you gotta take the, that initial step. I'm, I wanna make sure that you guys understand limiting risk I think is important because I see a lot of people get into it and then they kind of uh, underestimated or they didn't take the they, they made some wrong moves and then they're out. I don't want you guys to be out of the market before you're in it. So I'm sharing with you guys some of the very small, I took some baby steps and graduated up over the years. And again, I started with that executive suite model. From there, think about it. What happens to those people that are in those incubation spaces, right? Well, at some point they're gonna need bigger space. And that's exactly what started happening. So I started buying bigger buildings, putting these people in bigger spaces and grew with them. We were growing together. So now I'm buying bigger office space that's not executive, but putting those businesses that were incubating into them. Again, growing my income at the same time. The biggest thing during that whole process is learning how to underwrite your deals. Understanding how cash flow works, budgets, being able to stick with them, understanding your clientele, 
What kind of asset are you going after? Who are you going to attract to it? How many people in that particular asset class are looking for what you're creating? These are the things you kind of got to understand. You don't need to be an expert, but you do need to be able to pencil it and make it make sense. So the more that you could stick to a budget, timelines, all these things, it's so much more important because you start dealing with 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 square feet where, you know, if you're off a couple bucks a foot in your rehab model, we're not talking, you know, 10, 20,000 in that particular model. You're talking up to $200,000 just in two bucks. So you want to make sure that you're sticking to your budget, sticking to your numbers. The nice thing is, is on commercial, I have found that coming up with a budget is so much easier than it is in residential. There's less variables. The products are much more simple. I tend to use the same products over and over and over. So I know what price per square foot things cost. So again, what we're doing through here is just talking about limiting your exposure, your risk, just trying to hedge against it, right? Same thing, you wanna be able to get tenants in there and lure them in to take advantage of whatever lease specials you have. Speaking about how consistent maybe the rehab is, let's talk about office for a second, what just happened during the pandemic. During the pandemic though, office took a hit, right? A lot of people weren't necessarily working out of the offices, bigger businesses left. I'll tell you what, those executive suites we had, not a problem, didn't miss a beat. Some of the bigger spaces, yeah. We'd show up in the, in the morning and maybe some of those guys were gone. It is what it is. So you, you do take risk. So how do we hedge against risk? That's right. It's all in the buy. I don't care if it's residential or commercial. You make your money on the buy when you acquire an asset. So the better that you buy, the better you could hedge against any sort of market adjustment. That just means you're in it that much better. So think about it as loan to value. You're, if you're in the thing 90 to 100% of what it's worth or close to it or 80, all right, yeah, you have some exposure. But let's say you start getting down to 70, 60, 50, you could hedge against things that, because most people buying assets like that, they're banking and looking at, they have to get X amount per square foot. This I know from experience that if I buy a commercial property better, I could outbeat my competition as long, and if I could put up a nice facade, make the property look good, I could undercut them dramatically, fill up my property so much faster while they're sitting there, they have to get those numbers to make them cash flow. I don't. Again, it's all in the buy. So when looking at commercial real estate, it's one of the key things, it's the key thing I look for, is price per square foot, or what is the, what is the evaluation of the property? What's it really worth fixed up and can I get a great deal on it? So the reason I'm emphasizing these things so much right now with you is because if you're looking at commercial real estate investing, I just wanna make sure everything's transparent and that you need to look for all these different things that I'm talking about. Just look out for them. If anything, this should be encouraging to you because if you're doing residential, all these things kind of just morph over but you don't have to be so attentive to the details of the build out and all these different things typically, right? So you're able to scale something like this and bring it on market for a lot less price per square foot. You get creative. You could also acquire these things for a lot less than most. You could reposition these assets as well, allowing you because there, it's a, I call it blind spots in the market. There are people that just don't know this and that's your competition. And because they don't, it leaves a wide open field, allowing you to take advantage of great deals, scale your business, make, make a ton of money, well, as much money as you want. To go back to the original question, how much money could you make in re commercial real estate investing? As much as you possibly want. I've talked a lot about commercial real estate and why I like it, because it's the blind spot, no one else is in it. But hey, I've been doing residential for longer and I still do it and I love it. You could scale up just as, quick and easy, but what I like about the, the residential side, I do fix and flips primarily with my residential properties because it's like a lot of ask, a lot of money tied up typically on a cash flowing property. If I could take and, and make that um, equity liquid in the form of selling it when I'm done rehabbing it, I then take that money, that uh, equity, and I use it for a down payment on a commercial asset. So that's my model in general. I'm always doing fix and flips and it feeds the commercial side. So then that way I could put it in a bigger asset that when I get an appreciation of three, four, 
is wow, on a couple million dollars, it grows a lot faster than in a smaller house. Anyways, I try to be um, a little diverse in having residential and commercial, different types of commercial. So, and I recommend that you do too. You have to first take action, get started, whether it's residential or commercial real estate, you got to get going. Once you do, grow that number to whatever you want it to be. That being said, everybody's got a comfort zone of where they want to get started. We want to help you flesh this out. You may have resources you don't even know. Give us a call. Let us help you get started in your real estate investing career right now. Click on the link below, schedule your appointment. See you soon.